back to my channel. I'm Kiana and I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. I've been sewing masks all day and all night because I started an Etsy store um, and I've been selling some cute masks. <gasps> Let me show you. Actually, I don't want to get up. You know what? I'll just insert a picture because that's so much work to get on this bed again. I've been selling masks, scrunchies, skirts, um, soon some crop tops and stuff on my Etsy, which I'll put right here and I'll link down below. But yeah, I've been super busy. I've been sewing from 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. like every single night. But yeah, I finally got a chance to film an intro for this video, to edit this video. So I asked you guys on TikTok which tutorial you wanted me to do. I showed six different clothing items and I asked you guys to pick your favorite. And these pants definitely won. I won't lie to you though. This is not a super beginner tutorial. I've been doing a lot of beginner tutorials, but I wanted to do something a little bit more advanced. It's not the hardest thing in the world. They're a pair of pants. They're not super fitted, so we got that going for us. But they're still pants. Pants are a little bit more challenging than skirts and stuff like that. But luckily, I'm here to give you a super detailed tutorial. Yeah, so the pants I'm shining today are high-waisted trousers, a wide leg, and they have pleats in the front and then little side seam pockets. I'm excited about the pockets. I love putting pockets into things. Um, the pockets do take an hour or two, maybe three if you've never put them in before. So if you don't want to do the pockets, that's super easy. You just sew the side seam normally. Um, and you can shave that time off of the construction of the garment. But if you want to learn how to put side seam pockets in, I'm going to show you how. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. Oh my god, thank you for a thousand subscribers. I forgot. I checked today. I had a thousand subscribers. I haven't posted a video in a month. Last time I checked, I had like 600 and somehow now I have a thousand. So thanks. <laughs> I feel like a real YouTuber. Smiling. Fun. But anyways, yeah. Comment if you want a new tutorial on whatever you want. I don't know. Let me know. What do you want to see? So yeah, if you want to learn how to make these pleated trousers, just keep watching. Okay, so start off with a pant block, but if you don't have a pant block, because let's be real, who has a pant block other than me and my fellow fashionista students? Um, we can rip off some pants we already own. JK, it's not ripping enough. We're just taking the pattern, um, the general pattern of some pair of pants. Uh, we're gonna trace it out to create our own pant block. So basically, we're just gonna trace out the side seams, all these seams that I'm pointing to right here, for the front and the back of the pants so we can have a pant block for the front leg and where the front leg we have two legs and they're left and right for the front of your leg and then for the back of your leg so just go around follow the seams of your pants take your time trace it out and i'm going to show you how i'm tracing out the back of this pant leg because the front is very straightforward it's just a piece of fabric but the back has a dart so like i said what I'm doing here, I'm just tracing around all the seams very carefully, making sure that I'm tracing the actual seam of the garment and not just where it's like folded over. So make sure you're pulling it nice and tight, smoothing it out and tracing those seam lines exactly. See right here, you don't wanna trace the fold, you wanna trace that seam. So I'm just pulling it, smoothing it out and tracing the seam. Okay, so once you do that, you're gonna have this shape. Obviously go down, you know, finish the leg out, but I just wanted to show you the top because that's the complicated part. Basically, if you do this on the front, this is all you're gonna have to do, but the back, we're gonna have to add the dart. So I'm moving over that back center seam an inch and I'm putting the dart around the center of the top where the waistline is. And I'm making the dart about an inch wide. I'm creating my new center back and then I'm crossing out that old line and I'm making the dart about four and a half inches long. Um, I would just go with these measurements. If you don't know what you're doing, this is a good rule of thumb. Um, you could measure it out more, make it more specific, but you know, good rule of thumb. And then I'm just labeling it. Now I am using that pant block we just created and I am going to trace it out onto another piece of paper or pattern paper or muslin if you don't have any like me um, so that we can go ahead and manipulate that to be a wide leg pant. Um, and we're doing this because once you create a pant block, you can reuse that for other patterns. You don't wanna just throw that away or manipulate that one piece. You wanna be able to use that for the future. So that's why we're creating a new pattern piece for that. 
By the way, this is the front if you couldn't tell because there's no dark. But anyways, we're going to make the pleat now. So I'm just marking on our new pattern piece, the center, and then I'm going to draw two lines, two inches from that center mark. Then I'm taking our pant block, lining up the center of the pant block with the lines on the side and tracing out a new side seam on each side. And I'm gonna show you why we're doing this. As you can see, when we move those side points to the center point, it creates that nice pleat that we're looking for in the pants. And I'm showing you what that looks like now. And as you can see, it doesn't change the fit of the pants. It just adds that fullness, and that design detail there. Last alteration we have to make is just widen the leg of the pants so that it can be more of a flared wide leg design instead of straight. Then after that, I just labeled it, added a grain line, and then I'm adding half inch seam allowance around the entire pattern piece, except for at the hem where I'm gonna add two inches of seam allowance just to be safe. And then after that, just cut out your pattern piece and you're good to go for the front. Now for the back, we're gonna start out by tracing our pant block again, this time the back piece, as you can imagine. And literally the only alteration we're gonna make to the pattern piece is widening the leg like that. Just widen the leg, add a half inch seam allowance around it, except for two inches at the end, and you're done. And then for the waistband, just make the length, the circumference measurement of your waist, so minus 26 inches, and then make the width three inches wide, because it'll end up being an inch and a half wide at the end. And then just add half inch seam allowance around the entire rectangle, and boom, there's your waistband. And this is what the pattern pieces look like up against my dress form. Okay, now I'm going to use our new pattern pieces to cut out the legs of the pants. Make sure you cut out a left and right leg because that's important. Next, for the front pattern pieces, the front pieces of fabric, we're going to mark where our pleat is going to be. So I'm just going to insert some pins into those three marks we made before so that I can go ahead and then draw lines at them. Um, and right now, I'm just folding the piece in half and then I'm drawing a line four inches down from one of the side lines. Um, making a straight line. You'll see what I'm you, you'll see what I'm talking about when I go ahead and sew it But I just folded it in half on that center line Created a straight line down from one of the side lines and I ended up four inches from the top Okay, that made more sense. Yeah, so we're just gonna sew on that white line that I just created and when we open it up After everything is said and done. It's gonna turn out to be this nice pleat and I'm trying to show you what it's going to look like so you can visualize it better so yeah that is what it's going to end up looking like so i'm just going to take it over to my sewing machine so a regular straight stitch from the top four inches down on that straight line to create our pleat okay and then after that i'm going to take that over oh also back stitch yes don't forget to back stitch lock in that seam then I'm taking it over to the ironing board and I'm going to open up that pleat so it's distributed evenly from the center line and I'm just going to iron it down. I'm going to iron it four inches down from the top so it's nice and crisp where it's supposed to be pleated. And then right at the top here, I'm just going to sew a little stitch like that right there just so the pleat stays in place while we're sewing it. Now we're literally going to just repeat this marking, sewing, pressing process for that back dart. So I'm just marking the back pleat with pins at first, and then I'm going to mark it again with some chalk, just so I know exactly where to sew. So I'm using this curved ruler to mark our dart, and then after that I'm going to fold it in half and pin it in place so that I know where exactly to sew. And I'm gonna sew on that white line right there very carefully and very slowly. So I'm taking it over to my sewing machine, sewing on that line. But when I get to the very end, I don't backstitch. I just, I put my needle down and then I sew off the edge. I leave this really long tail of thread and then I just go ahead and I double knot that and that helps to reduce the bulk um, from that dart and it doesn't make it or it helps so it doesn't pucker. Then finally, I'm going to press the dart towards the center back seam, not the side seam, um, and that's it. Okay, now for the inseam pockets, literally just download an inseam pocket off of the internet. There are hundreds, thousands, um, and then trace it out so that we can manipulate it to fit our, our pants. So I'm just going to trace a new side seam on this inseam pocket 
so that it fits perfectly in line with our pants when we sew it on. Then I'm just gonna true up our new pattern piece for our pockets, and then we are going to use it to cut out four pieces of fabric because each pocket needs two pieces of fabric to, you know, form the pocket. Now before I construct anything, I'm gonna take each of those four individual pieces and finish the edges somehow. I'm choosing to overlock it with my serger um, so that those edges don't fray. After that, just line up your back and front pieces just on one side so that the side seam is in the middle and then add your pockets on top of those pieces. Make sure you do right sides together. I'm choosing to do my pockets about an inch and a half from the top and then just stitch those down with a half inch seam allowance. Now I'm trying to motion to you that you also wanna finish the edge with a serger or something else um, down the whole side seam so that can be nicely finished. After that, we just wanna flip our pocket out like this and then just stitch on the side of the pocket really close to that seam line and that'll just help the pocket stay inside of your pants when you're wearing it and it won't flip out or anything like that. And it just makes it look a little bit more professional and a little bit nicer like that. Next, we're gonna take the front and back piece, line them up on top of each other at the side seams and then just pin along the entire side seam and around the pocket. And we're also gonna sew along this line as well to create our new side seam and our pocket. So now you're just gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance. When you get to the pocket, put your needle down, lift your presser foot and pivot your work to the side so that you can get that nice crisp corner and have the pocket sewn in nicely. Then just sew all the way around the pocket and then again, I just wanna show you that pivot in case you missed it. Place your needle down, lift up your presser foot, and then turn your work to the side and continue sewing all the way down the leg. Now at the very center front crotch of your pants, um, just place those right sides together, pin them up, sew them on the sewing machine with half inch seam allowance, and then also just clean that up with your serger. Um, just to finish that edge so it doesn't fray or anything like that. If you don't have a serger, you could also always just use a zigzag stitch. Then after that, we're gonna go onto the waistband, just cut out the waistband, and then also cut out some interfacing um, to fit into that middle blue line of the waistband that we have there, because we don't want any seam allowance on this interfacing since it's fusible, um, and we don't want it sewn in. We're gonna just press it in, so. I'm gonna show you here, this is the size of the interfacing you should have. As you see, it fits in that pattern of the waistband without going over those blue lines. Now I'm just going to place that on the wrong side of the waistband, add some press cloth over our fusible so my iron doesn't get ruined and press that fusible right on to our waistband so that it can stabilize a little bit more and the waistband has more durability to it. After that, I'm just gonna pin the waistband right sides together to our pants that we have here and it should fit nicely along the pants it could be a little bit longer like mine is but that is no problem so i'm just gonna first sew with my sewing machine then clean it up with the serger then i'm also gonna go on the other side of the waistband and clean that up preemptively and then also sew down or serge down the back center seams um, just so that's nice and clean for when we add the zipper, which we are going to do right now. So I'm measuring about an inch and a half from that seam line so that we know where to fold our waistband and also where to first put the zipper. So I'm marking that with some chalk. I'm also going to use a pin because I'm indecisive. And then I'm going to add my invisible zipper at that point where I've added the pin. So I'm just folding down that top part of the zipper and then I'm gonna pin the zipper in place along our center back seam. Um, and then I'm choosing to stop my zipper about nine inches, not about, exactly nine inches from where our zipper started. So I'm just inserting a pin at the nine inch mark so I know exactly when to stop sewing. So I'm just using my zipper foot on my sewing machine and sewing really, really close to that invisible zipper. If you have an invisible zipper, zipper foot, great. Better for you, this is just a little bit harder to do, um, but you can still do it. And then I'm stopping at the nine inch mark and then you wanna do that to the other side. Um, once you do that, I'm going to flip my work inside out and then line up the remainder of that back 
crotch area. And then I'm just gonna continue from where I stopped sewing at the zipper all the way down and finish sewing up that crotch seam. You can also just clip right off the remainder of that zipper. After that, I'm just gonna use my iron and fold the waistband in half and then press it down on that center line so it's nice and crisp and we know where the waistband is supposed to be. After that, fold the waistband right sides together over the zipper like so, and then we're just gonna stitch right down there and that's gonna make it so that the zipper is nice and encased in that waistband and it looks a lot more professional like that. So I'm just gonna quickly sew a little stitch down the side there and it's gonna look super professional like this. After I do that on both sides, I'm going to just secure the rest of my waistband down by stitching in that seam right there where the waistband attaches to the pants. This is called stitching the ditch, making sure that I'm catching the waistband seam allowance on the other side. And that is my gross, disgusting face. Get out of the freaking frame. Okay, but yeah, just stitch right in that seam line right there, um, picking up the waistband in the back, and then your waistband should be finished and secured. Okay, final stretch. Um, we are gonna just sew the inseam. I for, I don't know what happened to the clip, honestly, but you know, just line it up face to face, right sides together, sew the inseam and then finish it like with the serger or however you want. And then your inseam is sewn. And then after that, all you have to do is hem your pants. Remember we did a two inch seam allowance for the hem. So I'm gonna fold it up one inch and then fold it up another inch and then stitch it down. Um, yeah, and this is what it should look like. Um, also, just try it on. Maybe you need to hem it a little bit less. Maybe it's too short. Maybe it's too long and you need to cut it off and hem it a little bit more. You know, just try it on. See what works for you and go from there. But, you know, I believe in you. I don't know what happened to the clip of me sewing along this edge. But you've gotten this far and I believe that you can do it without this one clip of just me sewing a seam. But after that, you're done. And then you got some pants. Wow some trousers cute okay yeah you saw this already so bye okay anyways that's how you make the pants hope you enjoyed it hope you learned a few new techniques if you try it out please send me photos tiktoks whatever my instagram is kian Bonello and so is my tiktok so if you try out any of my stuff please show me i want to see it would make me so happy um but yeah anyways like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks for watching bye